have entered the realm of the truth. Make it the truth. If you tell it, know what it is. If you clean, declare your name. Whichever way it go, it'll definitely be the truth. Yeah, they be like, who is this Mickey Truth girl? Who qualifies her to put a work on these people? What's up, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Mickey Truth, aka the queen of paperwork, and I am back with another video. As always, all information contained in this video is for entertainment educational purposes only. All information used in this video is per the Fair Use Act. And any conclusion that you draw is on you, not me. So let's get it. You and Gucci Mane got one thing in common. You're, uh, allegedly, y'all both caught a body. Not together, but, you know, that's just through the grapevine. You know, somebody tried to rob you or some shit. I'm not sure. Some people say you have three bodies. I'm just telling you what the street's telling me. Um... Do you and you don't you don't one thing you don't brag about that too much like on the internet you don't too much brag about catching bodies and doing all that but the you know word on the street is you do got a body is that true or is there something you don't want to really just speak on? That um everybody uh pretty much know the story you know what I'm saying uh, if y'all don't know the story go to um iTunes movie or anywhere you can watch a movie at and type in Soldier Boy the movie and watch that movie and they tell you the whole story. But basically, you know, some niggas ran in my career and I shot. This was before the fame or? This is with the fame. Okay. In this crib right here or? Nah, it? hell nah. Oh. This is in Atlanta. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Some niggas ran in my shit and I shot them. That was it. Okay. Is that the reason why like you relocated and you was getting too hot in Atlanta or? Nah, I went, I was still in Atlanta. Okay. I went back to Atlanta. I was in Atlanta for like three years after this shit. A lot of rappers like using that, you know, oh, I killed the nigga for, you know, for the street clout. But it's something that it seems like you don't really like to do. Why is that? Because there ain't nothing to brag about. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, if niggas didn't know, they know what's up. And then the niggas, you know, everybody know. So they came like, oh, nigga don't know. So it ain't nothing to brag. Like, if you already know, it ain't nothing to tell you some shit you already know. Well, the legendary, okay, 2008 shooting slash home burglary slash armed robbery that we have heard Soldier Boy talk about over the years, including the infamous Vlad TV interview, which you already know I can't play. However, definitely go check it out. Now, let's get into the actual report from the Henry County Police. And y'all know the Queen of Paperwork had to go get the work to see exactly was Soldier Boy moving like John Wick or no? Nah? Let's take a look. On December 30th, 2008, at approximately 323 hours, I responded to 163 Southgate Boulevard, Mendoza, Georgia, in reference to an armed robbery slash home invasion call. While en route to the residence, dispatch advised me that several sub subjects entered the residence and were armed with guns, possibly AK-47s. Upon arrival, myself and other officers located an open rear door to the residence. As I approached the door, I could see blood in the bottom of the door. I also could see that the door had been forced open due to the frame of the door was laying on the floor in the kitchen. Officers then entered the residence to check for intruders. As I was checking the interior of the residence, I observed five shell cases laying on the floor in front of a room that was located just off the living room. After officers cleared the residence, I went outside the residence where I spoke to homeowner DeAndre Wade, aka Soldier Boy, for those who didn't know that's Soldier Boy's name. Wade stated he was inside his recording room uh, recording a song when he heard a loud noise come from the kitchen area. Wade stated he turned off the music and cracked his door open, at which time he saw a male wearing all black with a red mask run past the room with the AK-47 in his hands. Wade stated he closed his door back and hid in the room until his friend, Clark Shondrick, came to the room and said they were gone. Wade stated while hiding in the room, he heard several gunshots inside the residence. I spoke with Abram Mustafa, a.k.a. Arab, for those who don't know, who stated he was in the same room as Wade when he heard a rear door bust open. Mustafa stated he heard a male say, get down and who's all in here? Mustafa stated Wade turned off the lights and he laid on the floor. Mustafa stated he then heard gunshots and a man screaming. 
I then spoke with Rucker, who stated that he saw the door get kicked open. He ran into the laundry room. Rucker stated short time later, a male entered the room and he began to fight the male. Rucker stated the male pulled him out of the laundry and into the kitchen, at which time the male put a gun to his head and asked him where was the money. Rucker stated he gave the male his wallet, which contained his GA driver's license and a debit card. Rucker stated the male pulled him out of the residence and down rear steps. Rucker stated then all the males took off running. Wade stated the following items was taken off the kitchen table. One soldier boy platinum chain with blue and yellow diamonds valued at $150,000. One King Johnny custom wrist watch. Okay. Uh, with blue and yellow diamonds with a picture of Wade in the middle value at $60,000. One SOD platinum bracelet with blue and yellow diamonds value at twenty k, 2000 in U.S. currency. On December 30th, 08, Tuesday at 3.23 hours, I was dispatched to 163 South Bay Boulevard, Stop Bridge, Georgia, in reference to an armed robbery slash home invasion. Upon arrival, Officer Hicks, Officer Rourke, and myself entered and cleared the residence. We located no person on the scene. Radio advised that the victim was back en route to our location and was standing by outside as we cleared the house. Officer Hicks made contact with victim and Officer Rupp started a crime scene log. Radio advised at 3.39 hours that Henry Medical Center had a subject that was dropped off with multiple gunshot wounds. Radio advised the subject refused to tell the Henry Medical staff where the shooting took place. I responded <clears throat> to Henry Medical Center and began to investigate. The subject was shot, was identified as Travis Isaac, DOB 89. Travis currently lives in blank on blank. I was unable to obtain the current house numbers on the street. Travis is a black male, about 5'5 five, five tall, around 200 pounds, black hair, brown eyes. The staff at the medical, Henry Medical, gave the clothes that Travis was wearing to include a pair of blue jeans and a black pair of Nike Air Jordans. I also recovered his cell phone and a fire bullet that was taken out of Travis while the staff was working on him. I checked the cell phone and the last number that was called was blank. Call ID name of blank at 351 hours. The staff at Henry Medical Center advised me that Travis had been shot a total of five times in the following areas, his right leg, pelvis area, and right arm. Henry Medical contacted Grady Hospital and Travis was flown to Grady Hospital for further treatment. I took a statement from the intake nurse at Henry Medical Center. Carmel stated she was taking a patient out to the parking lot around 325 hours. Carmel stated a young black male came from the south side of the hospital hanging on another male. Carmel stated the male was yelling to help and stated he had been shot. Camille said that she took the subject later identified as Travis Isaac to room 1156. Camille could not provide a description of the other male or the car that dropped off Travis. I returned to 163 Southgate and spoke to Detective Yancey about my findings. I made contact with crime scene Ted Wilkes and released the clothes, phone, and bullet to his custody for the evidence purposes. On December 30th, 2008, at approximately 320 hours, I responded to 163 Southgate Boulevard in reference to a home invasion. Upon my arrival, I waited outside the residence while other officers cleared the house. While outside, I was approached by a black Hummer H2 GA tag driven by Mr. DeAndre Cortez Wade. Mr. Wade stayed approximately 45 Males wearing ski masks kicked in the back door of his residence and stole money and jewelry from him. Mr. Wade stated that the men were armed with AKs. He said he did not know who the men were. Mr. Wade then said the men possibly left in a white Honda. With the information I was provided, I went to Henry Medical Center where North Precinct officers were investigating a shooting. I searched the area for possible suspects involved in the home invasion. Upon my arrival, I met with Officer Jerez, who was with the suspect in Trauma Room 56. I then spoke with the suspect, who identified himself as Travis Palmer with the date of birth of 89. I then had communication check the suspect by name and date of birth. He came back not on file through Georgia. 
I then met with hospital security who reviewed their surveillance footage. I observed a white and color Ford vehicle pull into the parking lot at about 327 hours and out of camera view and then backed out of the parking lot. I then observed an employee of the hospital exit the front doors to the parking lot at about 332 hours and then come back with the suspect in a wheelchair. So this was the conclusion here, okay, um, as far as the investigation. It said on December 30th, 2008, Travis Washington, Isaacs, and several others, each armed with firearms, into 163 Southgate Boulevard, Meadow, by forcing their way through the back door. Travis Isaacs and the other suspect pointed firearms at DeAndre Way, Chandra Clark, Justin Rucker, and Abram Mustafa while inside the residence, detaining them against their will. As an act of self-defense, DeAndre Way took possession of a pistol, firing several times towards Travis Isaacs and the other suspect. Travis Isaacs was shot several times by DeAndre Way. Other suspects grabbed Justin Rucker, forcing him out of the residence against his will into the backyard where his wallet containing several personal items was stolen. Several pieces of jewelry belonging to DeAndre Way valued at 232000 and approximately 2000 in U.S. currency was taken by the suspects from the residence. Approximately 15 minutes after the incident, Travis Isaacs was rushed to the emergency room department at the Henry Medical Center by Sar Dewandi in connection with Travis Isaacs being the victim of several gunshots. Dewandi then fled the hospital via the ambulance entrance. Further investigation revealed that Travis Isaacs is a convicted felon in connection with a felony theft of property occurring in Tennessee on October 16, 2008. Blood evidence was collected on the scene. A search warrant for DNA was executed at blank in connection with Travis Isaacs. Here we go. Henry County Police Department statement form for DeAndre Way. They do have him listed as the victim. Let's read what he says. Like five or six dudes broke into my house. I cut all the lights off and hid with my eyes closed. Then they tried. Then, okay, hold on. Dang, his writing is like chicken scratch. Closed. Then they came in the room. Shots were fired. One was screaming. Then my homeboy came in the room and said they were gone. And we all left the house. I shot a nine millimeter about five times. Then they took the gun and knocked me down and ran out. The gun was the gray and black nine millimeter. Well, I'm going to tell you now, that's definitely a different story than he told Vlad. But nevertheless, this was done at 430 on December 30th. So keep that in mind. 430, December 30th. That's when it was complete. It started at four, but completed. Okay. Now we go down here. This was done at 540 on December 30th, which was the same day of the incident. It says, Hater, I something at what? Hater, I blank at the hospital photos. Hmm. Hater, I something, something. The hospital photos, I identified two of the people as Mike Dingo and Blank. They are signed to my record lab label. The name of the group is Blank. I'm not sure what that first part is. All right, next is a rap statement, okay? Now, this is the first of two, but this was taken the day of the shooting. Which says, I was in the studio with my friend DeAndre, and then I heard a door bust open. I heard a man say, get down, and who's all in here? DeAndre cut off the lights, and I laid on the floor. I heard gunshots and a man screaming, and the rain. This is chicken scratch, but that's what they said. All right, so at 3.51 p.m., Travis Isaac, a.k.a. Drew, was being worked on in the hospital. Okay, they were getting his belongings from the nurse. He had to be transferred to Grady. From 4 to 4.30, Soldier Boy was providing his statement, all right? Then his second part of his statement was from 5.30 to 5.40, which he listed the names. 
with that being said, y'all tell me, did Soldier Boy provide the details and identify the subjects before anybody even said his name? Or do y'all think something else? Y'all let me know in the comments. And like I said, y'all see, this is only page 9 of 32. And this is just the police report. We still got to go through the court papers. So with that being said, this is part one. Part two is coming sooner than you think. Sooner, sooner than you think. So make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend to pull up on your girl, Mickey Truth. And as always, go over to MickeyTruth.com and get you that merch because you know your girl stay with that work. So until next time, holla. You rap for saying stay. <laughs>